Okay, this is Orlando Wilson. What I want to talk about in this video is something which is more political than anything else. Um, it follows on from a video I'd done earlier, well, in the last couple of days, reference uh, blind patriotism, blind loyalty, etc. And I summed it up in that video. My opinion of people that are blindly patriotic is uh, they're slaves with Stockholm Syndrome. They're mentally ill because, again, you need to be able to question everything. And if you believe your governments are working in your interest, well, some do, the vast majority don't. And I think uh, that's becoming more and more clear these days with uh, the way the world is going. Um, I like to always take things back to basics. And to me, human beings are tribal animals. And if we think about it from a tribal perspective, being human beings, why do we need leaders? Well, we need leaders, one, well, why in old times of tribes instead of countries were leaders elected? Selected. Well, generally the leaders help protect their communities, protect their people, and also help their people progress. They brought in wealth, they shared the wealth, they helped their people progress. Now, if we're looking at the way things are going globally, well, let's say, well, globally, if we look at how things are going in the United States, UK, Western Europe, the supposed developed world, can we say the leaders of the United States, United Kingdom, and most of Europe are actually working in the interest of their people? Or are they just using their people? Let's think about it from are most leaders these days providing security for their people? Well, not really, because crime rates are going up. There's illegal immigration that's gone through the roof, especially when you look in the United States, the southern border is wide open. So there's no security. Crime rates are going up. United Kingdom, you've got how many immigrants pouring across the English Channel, sexually abusing children and nobody's doing well they might get thrown in jail for a little bit of time but when they're released from jail they're not deported etc they're victims etc etc so it's complete not a bs so from a security perspective most western governments are far from protecting their own people if we're looking economically are the leaders actually looking after their people are they investing in their countries they're investing in their infrastructure are they investing in their citizens? I would say not. Um, are they investing? Well, put it this way, and again, I said this in an earlier video, if I went back to UK, I'd get taxed. That's it. So I think the British government, British system, which isn't a democracy, it's a monarchy, um, are more interested in taxing its citizens and looking after its citizens. Um, they're more interested in giving giving to other people rather than their citizens. And we can see this with Ukraine as being one example where infrastructure in the UK, uh, US, Europe is having issues, to put it politely. Um, and instead of governments investing in their own countries, they're busy giving money to Ukraine, which of course is being kicked back in a lot of ways to the military industrial machine, etc., and to the elites. Now, as I said, the tribal system, governments should be there to look after their people. And we'll use, and I'll bash UK again on this, because UK has been a country and people say it's a democracy. It's not a democracy, it's a monarchy. Where, if you look at the history of the United Kingdom, once upon a time, the United Kingdom was ruling the vast majority of the world. Where did all that wealth go? If you go into places like Switzerland, uh, Switzerland's a rich country, the people live very well. You can see Switzerland made money and they invested in their infrastructure, invested in their people. Up until the Second World War, people in the United Kingdom, the vast majority of people were living in poverty. Where did all the money go from the colonies? Was the wealth spread amongst the people as leaders, responsible leaders should do? No, it was kept amongst the elites. And that's the problem today. Well, put it this way, UK has got a lot of money. They, the elites have never shared it. The royals have never shared it. They view their people as being slaves. As I said, read my article, uh, The British Slaves with Stockholm Syndrome, 
on my uh, blog. So this is where, and I'm sure people are saying these days, well, the people don't have money, et cetera, et cetera. Governments have plenty of money. That's why they're taxing people. But they're too busy lining their own pockets with it or giving it to other countries that's going to kick back to them or give contracts to their buddies, et cetera, et cetera. So the, to me, the most political systems these days, most governments are corrupt, completely corrupt. They're working for their own interests. They're not working for their countries and they're not working for their people's interests. I mentioned Switzerland. Let me give you another example of a country that is working for their people's interests. Let's use uh, UAE, United Arab Emirates, as an example. Do they have money? Yes, they have lots of money. Do the rulers have lots of money? They have too much money. Is that money shared amongst their people? And is it shared amongst those people in their country? Is the infrastructure good? Are the people looked after? Yeah, 100%. So there's an example of where the country, the rulers of the country have plenty of money. It's a monarchy, but they look after their people. They look after the the foreigners, the legal immigrants that's working in their country. And this is where I think a lot of people could learn from United Arab Emirates example of you need to invest. OK, if you have money, you need to invest in your people and invest in your country. Now, Emiratis, the locals only make up 5% of the population. I might be wrong off a few percent, but it's a small, they're a small minority in their own country. So they have 90 to 95% uh, immigrants working in their country. Did they have problems with crime? No. Did they have problems with grooming gangs? Did they have problems with crime in general? No, the United Arab Emirates is a very safe country, even though 90 to 95% of the people in it are immigrants. They keep control of their country. Now I've heard how many people say about, well, their human rights, well, places like, <coughs> excuse me, United Kingdom bash them for their human rights issues, etc. Okay, the UK is bashing a country for their human rights issue, in human rights issues, when they're giving how much money to Ukraine to bomb, to, to fight a war. They're supporting the bombing of Gaza. They're supporting, they're bombing the Houthis in Yemen. How many people have the British killed over the years during the colonial days, etc.? What about the, the starvation of Bangladesh, etc.? And again, if you don't believe it happened, read my article, British the Slaves with Stockholm Syndrome, and it, um, it's got all the facts and figures there. So this is where you've got people criticizing the Emiratis for the human rights system, where I think a lot of countries could learn a lot from the Emiratis and how they're doing things and how they're running things. And I'm sure people are going to come up and say, well, they're a rich country, they have the money. You know what? US has the money. Britain has the money. It's just kept amongst the elites. It's not shared. Other European countries have the money, but they're too busy keeping it amongst the elites and not sharing the wealth. That's the problem. So this is where I think people are beginning to see that the governments in the West... Um, you know what, the system's not working. The system's outdated. And I think you can see, uh, Europe I think is screwed, period. UK is screwed. And I think US, US is still a young country and they're still learning in a lot of ways. The people in the United States are not as brainwashed and conditioned as they are in Europe. You can see that happening now because what's happening in Texas and Texas is saying, oh, you know what, we're gonna protect our people because our people need protecting from vast waves of undocumented illegal immigrants crossing their borders that's going to do nothing but milk our system and cause a crime wave. Um, at least Texas is saying we're going to protect our people to start with because we know it's what's best for our people. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They know what is best for their, they want to do the best for their people rather than worrying about people who are not their people. Um, so I can see U.S. kicking back on this, and I think a lot of people in the U.S. are realizing that, again, why are we spending, why are Americans sending how many, how much of their tax dollars overseas while well, the infrastructure is failing in America? I was in South Florida a few months ago, and it's, um, 
things have changed for when I lived there for four and a half, five years ago. It seems very uh, shabby and downbeat. So, you know what? Hopefully people will wake up and realize that as f from what I can see and from my perspectives, um, the political systems in the West are not working. And I think the rest of the world, I know the West, US, UK, Europe, and what else we can include, Australia and South Korea and Japan think they're the whole world and not the whole world. I think the whole world is beginning to look at the West and say, you know what, you're crumbling, you're crumbling fast. We don't want your globalist values, we want traditional values. Um, and that's why you've got groups like Brex uh, popping up and I think they're going to be a powerhouse in the near future. I think the US will be okay because the US, as I said, is a young country and it will change, people will wake up. But I think um, unless there's a major reset in Europe and the United Kingdom, I think there's going to be, uh, they're on the, the empire is uh, finally coming to an end well and truly. But again, that's just my opinion. But um, check out my blog, check out the article I mentioned here a couple of times, but the British slaves with Stockholm Syndrome, and it will highlight a few more of my opinions. Um, but in the meantime, follow me along on social media. I prefer X, formerly known as Twitter, because there's a lot more free speech on there and also LinkedIn because it's a lot more professional. Um, and again, if you got any comments about this video, feel free to write them below in the comment section or drop me a line um, if you're following me on social media. But in the meantime, I hope this gives you a few things to think about. Check the facts and start questioning things. Don't believe the media and definitely do not believe the politicians that's in power at the moment.